So you've got this beautiful natural blue sky, but it needs some clouds. I hope you're ready to learn how to paint today. Come on in and welcome to my studio. All right, we are getting set to paint some, some big puffy clouds uh, into this blue sky. Now, just a reminder of what, what project we've got going on. Um, I did, I'm doing a local subject here uh, near my home here in South Arkansas. And um, I'm just gonna be doing, uh, this, is, this is a place called Longview. Uh, but I'm gonna be making some alterations of this painting as, as we get a little bit deeper into it. But the step, uh, we're doing an oil painting, so the step that we're doing next um, is going to be the clouds uh, in this painting. Now we may change them up a little bit, we may, we may sort of ad-lib those, but we're just going to get some good basic clouds. That's the thing about it, we have artistic license, we're painters, so we can do, we can kind of change things how we want. For instance, I'm going to take these light poles out later on in, in future steps. But again, we're doing an oil, oil painting, so it's been about uh, a few days since we, since we painted, three, four days since we painted this blue sky. Um, and we're, we've let it dry now, uh, even the white, there's even some white paint here on our horizon line. I've let that completely dry or, or oxidize. It actually doesn't dry, but it does, does oxidize. And um, what we're gonna be doing now is just, just laying, in some, laying in some beautiful clouds. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my brush glass that I've got here and kind of, I'm just, I, I really didn't plan this out. I'm just gonna try to find a, a decent brush to, to use for this step. Um, I want I want a scrubber. I want one that I don't mind beating up a little bit. And I believe I have found it. I'm going to be using a number four bristle. Okay. Now I was working on a, another painting earlier, uh, and I, so I've got a bunch of colors already on already on my um, my palette. So I'm not going to change that at all. But I am just going to start um, here with a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to grab some cadmium orange and that's a pretty good color right there that's a really good color just for for our um, for our white part of our clouds the reason we don't want to use pure white is because very oftentimes clouds are not actually pure 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 white if you want to highlight your clouds pure white probably would be okay but that that little bit of warmth from the cat orange really kind of lends itself to, to be be uh, lead the viewer into seeing a little bit of sunshine, right? All right, so we're gonna go up here. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my picture just so that I kind of know generally where I wanna go with this. Um, I actually think I'm gonna start near the top. I'll tell you what, yeah, let's start near the top. And let's just lay in some, let's lay in some big fellas. And go ahead and carry that off the canvas. I'm just going to reach over and reload occasionally. Uh, I'm not I'm not the kind of painter that holds my palette all the time. I sometimes set it down on my table that I've got here beside me. I'm using some small little circular strokes, but some of them I kind of cut off and it just really it's almost a little backward C uh, shape and that helps me kind of fade out the back of them so that it's not overly strong. Leave some blue in some spots, you know, especially along the edge. A good rule of thumb um, that that is is okay to follow for the most part is your keep your tops top edges defined on a cloud. The bottoms need to be relatively faded out, unless it's like an edge like this where where the bottom is actually going to be. Um, kind of extended out beyond the cloud itself. All right, as my brush becomes dry at this point, I'm not going to reload it. And that's because I want some of this dark blue to, to show through. It will kind of, it'll create the, the essence of a dark cloud without me actually having to do that. I'm gonna make sure that I carry my cloud on off the 
the side, at least some. And I'll tell you what, I'll do the top as well. I'm not going to worry about the top too terribly much. Oh, got a little green in there. That's okay. I've been using this brush earlier today. And it still had a little bit of a little bit of green paint in it. All right. That looks pretty good. And at this point, I'm just going to keep building. I'm just going to keep building my cloud. If you get too much orange in it, just pull some more white out. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, some of these, you notice I've got some really good orange in this. Some of these, maybe, maybe they have some little stragglers or, or some little guys that are running out in front of the cloud. Really like that. That looks good. You'll be surprised. I want you to be sure to get that orange in there. Um, you will be amazed at the warmth and the, re the realism that comes through when you add that orange to the white. Now, notice I just left a really defined edge just underneath that cloud. And that creates the idea of, of, a, of a pretty thick cloud being built, but it also adds depth into the painting. And you want to sell a painting, make it where it looks like it's got a lot of depth in it. And we're just going to take a quick break because I've got a little beagle over here that is wanting to mess with a painting and it's still, it's still wet. So I'm going to take a quick break, make sure he doesn't mess with it any further and then I'll be right back and continue this. All right. So the pup has been kicked out of the studio for the moment. He usually hangs out in here with me. You guys will probably uh, see him and um, probably see him in my trailer or one of the trailers for the channel. Uh, he likes to hang out with me in here pretty often, but he can he can get a little nosy sometimes, and he's he's a beagle. All right, now we're going to kind of end that one right in there, and now we're going to start a different a different section. I have not changed that color. I, I do occasionally when I reload, I'll add a little bit more orange or a little less orange, and that changes the value enough that, that it, it still looks fairly random. Um, we, we do want everything to be random. You don't want this to look like just a block of color, okay? And we're gonna go back in and add some darker color later, but for the most part right now, we, we really are just trying to lay good color on. You notice why, why I said you needed to find a brush that you didn't mind beating up? Because I'm just scrubbing. I mean, it's this one's this one's been through the ringer already, and that's fairly normal. That's if you're a painter, that's going to happen. Ooh, got a lot of orange in that one. 
You know what? Let's roll with it. Let's keep it going. For the moment, let's just keep it keep it there. Let's see how it turns out looking. I think it may be a little strong. So I'm in fact I can already tell it is a little bit strong. So I'm gonna add some white. And what you do is you just kind of pull pull some of this white in here. Never gonna be able to take it all out, and you wouldn't really want to, but and blend that into that other cloud. If you're at home though, just I urge you just to watch this first. Don't paint with it. And then go back and really make it your own. Don't don't worry too much about don't worry too much about getting everything in the exact same spot I do because you want yours to be original. I'm leaving a gap here. I'm probably going to go back in with some dark color here soon. And we're just going to start going down. And as we go down, the clouds are going to get a little smaller because they're off in the distance. They'll lose a little bit of strength of color, but they'll they'll turn more white as they go further. See, I'm leaving little pockets. It's a lot like painting a tree in that you do need, you need negative space. And when I use that term negative space, for those of you who are not familiar with, with, with art, artistic terms, negative space means you need, you need a little bit of a, I'm trying to put this in good old South Arkansas English for you. Um, negative space just means that you, you really need to leave spots, randomized spots open because nature is random. Nature doesn't always look. You can go outside, I promise you, go outside with the camera and, tr and just, I challenge you to try to find something in your yard to take a picture of that looks like, it's, like it belongs in a museum. It's hard to do because things in, things in our normal world don't look perfect. And clouds aren't, aren't perfect little shapes. They're not little balls. One of the biggest problems I see in, in my art courses that I teach here, here in, in Arkansas, um, I just see, I see a lot, a lot of my students when they're painting clouds in particular, that just put on a circle. They'll just drop a circle in just like that. And some of them will get it even larger and, and that's okay if, if that's the starting point, but that cannot be where you finish up. You need to have that negative space um, tree limbs are not all, they don't all grow perfectly. They don't all, I got a little bit too much orange there. So I'm going to go back in with just pure white, pure titanium white. And I may have to work on this one a little bit. I, I got a lot of orange in this cloud and I really did not want that much. Yeah. And if you're painting with oils and you've never done it before, first of all, I'm happy for you. Glad you're, glad you're, you know, testing yourself a little bit, trying to bring in something a little different to your, to your repertoire. Um, you're going to get some heavy texture. 
with oils. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have these ridges and brush strokes are gonna be in it and that's, that's great. That's what we want. Oils are fantastic. They're the, I'll probably get a little slack for this uh, on YouTube and you guys who are acrylic fanatics can, can is I paint with acrylics too even on my show um, and they're great for studying I and they're great for some applications but if it's me and I'm painting a museum piece it's gonna be an oil painting they're just so awesome they the colors and it's I mean it's sci there's scientific reasons why the colors are so vivid with an oil than they're not with acrylics and there are things you can do to make acrylics better but why 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 do that just just paint with oils and get and, and be patient learn to be a patient painter if you've uh, if you're not a patient person I um, start painting in oils you'll, you'll get patient in a hurry <laughs> it kind of forces it I was not a very patient person the person who really got me started painting was my mother and she refused I asked her to, to teach me because I knew she had had a little bit of experience with it at one time and she refused at first because she didn't think I was patient enough for it and she was probably right at the time we, we had a lot of arguments about about paintings and what I was doing right or wrong or what didn't look good or did look good and she was right most of the time and it made me a better painter. Now at about this point, I'm going to clean my brush out. And I'm actually going to dry it, so uh, as I, I want you to just take a look at this for a few seconds, maybe hit the pause button, just look at it, and I'll be right back here in just a second with, um, with the continuation of, this, of this, this cloud painting. Finishing cleaning out my brush. I'm just trying to get all that excess orange out of it at the moment because the further back it goes it needs to it needs to get a little different. It needs to get a little bit stronger white. We don't want to kill all the orange out of it, but we don't we don't need it. I had a lot in my brush and I just wanted to make sure that that didn't become a, a, an issue further into the painting. All right, so my horizon line is going to be down here, so I need to start getting these clouds pretty small. And this photo was taken on a, on a kind of a gulf day. And what I mean by that is we get, the, we get a lot of gulf moisture here in South Arkansas. And so these were, these were gulf clouds coming out of, the, um, out of the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of moisture, it was a humid day. These last ones should not be too difficult to put in because they're so small. They're just off in the distance. Yep, you saw me just do that. My easels are full of paint. <laughs> Okay, that's looking really, really good so far. Now we got to add a little bit of a little bit of the shadow color. Now it sounds kind of backwards that you would paint the highlights first, but 
when the highlights are the strongest part of the of, of the cloud, then I definitely want to um, I want to paint the brightest and the heaviest color first. So that was my white, and that's what I did first. So now I'm just going to mix up a very light gray. I'm going to play with this. I don't have an exact recipe that I'm going by, but I know generally what I want. So uh, I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue. It needs to be kind of kin to this color, so I'm going to actually start kind of mixing it off to the side, and that's from that same batch. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I need ultramarine blue, maybe a little purple, and believe it or not, Van Dyke Brown. All right, now that's too dark. It's too dark. I'm pretty sure it is at least. Let me get my photo and make sure. I don't have to meet this photo exactly, but I need to get it close. Yep, that's too dark. So luckily we got a big old pile of titanium white right here. So let's grab it and let's pull some titanium white out. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. May need just a hair more of the white. Now let's go back down here. I'm just going to kind of judge it. That's fairly close. Fairly close. So now what I want to do, kind of look the underneath and the back side of these are what's actually going to be uh, dark. So right here, lay this in, just kind of Not gonna make this isn't gonna be as heavy of a color, but it is gonna be there. Kind of fade out the bottoms, just scrub them into the background, and then take it off as well. There we go. Maybe even a little bit up here. You know what? We need to darken it just just a little, just a little. So I'm going to add some ultramarine blue, Van Dyke Brown. I'm not adding purple to this one. Okay. Got a little bit better color, I think, mixed up. Oh yeah, much better color. I went, I had it too dark and then I lightened it up and I went too light. Now, one of the things you don't want to do that you did with the with the actual white color was we had these really defined edges. We actually want to blend all of this in. Other than a couple of places. There may be a couple of spots where we won't do that, but for the most part, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm, I've really got my brush relatively dry. There's not a ton of paint in it. You don't have to just stay on the bottom. You can kind of go into the cloud a little bit. It's looking good. Now as we go back further, it's actually going to be a little bit thinner on these clouds. Again, because the clouds are further back, they're not going to be as strong. Painting clouds is just about having confidence. That's all it is. It's a simple confidence factor. You need to be quick with your strokes. I believe in quick strokes. Do not, don't linger, linger okay? I think that was a cranberry song, wasn't it? Do you have to let it linger? Do you, do you really have to let it linger? Just, just go with it. I'm showing my age a little bit there. I 
This is an important step though. You really want to, this adds so much, so much to your painting. Now, don't get too much of a line. If you do that, you need to start wandering into this cloud a little bit, just, just to keep it random. I'm kind of staying on the back and left side of these clouds. And I'm gonna show you a trick here in a second how to really make these pop, or make one of them at least really pop, because I see an opportunity in it. Mixing up a little bit more color. Don't quite have enough at the moment. You can see, if, if you're already painting along with me though, you can really see why it's so important to let that background blue dry before you, you even start this, okay? Very important. Now as it goes further back, this color is gonna, gonna really get, it's gonna really lose its intensity. So I'm not even gonna put, I'm not gonna add any, I'm just gonna lightly get some color on these back clouds. And when I say light, I mean light. I'm not pressing hard onto the canvas. I'm, I'm being very quick about it. I'm just getting some a little indication of some darkness in some of these. Probably even got that one a little bit too hefty. But I, if, if I look back here in a few minutes, I can always change that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a trick. I see an opportunity in this cloud. I've got uh, some dark, a big area of darkness or shadow on this cloud right here. I'm not gonna clean my brush too much, but I'm gonna go directly into my pure white and my orange. It's still gonna be a little gray just because I've got some gray in my brush, but I'm gonna load this up nice and hefty with white and orange, okay? I've got a little bit here. Watch this. I tell you what, I am gonna clean out my brush because it's not, it's just not, that gray coming through may, may hurt this, what I'm about to do. So disregard everything I said about not cleaning out your brush. <laughs> Okay, pull some light, just get it in here, Need a little bit more, and a little bit of orange, probably, I've got a little bit too much there, so I'm going to pull some more white out of it, I don't want it too strong, I just need, I just need white, white with that little bit of orange in it, and then watch this. Bam. Look at the depth that that just created. In fact, I'm just going to kind of drift that on out, give me some filler. And just kind of fade this bottom out. Maybe have some little fellows hanging out underneath. Maybe even another one down here. All right. So the next thing we need to do, we need to back up because I'm, you guys may have a better view of it than even I do. I'm up close to it. To me, it's, it's kind of iffy whether or not it looks okay. Uh, I actually see a place that I'm gonna go ahead and fix that I think I need some darker color in. It's not bad, but it does need a little darker color. mixing a little bit more color up. I'm actually gonna probably get it a little darker than I normally would. Not much darker, but a little darker. Okay. 
And I'm thinking out of in this area, we need some, we need some dark color. And again, just kind of blend that in. Don't want to get into our orange down here because I really like that, but all right. So that's what we're going to do with that. I'm now going to back up. I'm going to step out of the camera view for a second and just look at this from about six feet back. If it looks good, we'll call it a day. If not, I'm going to, I'm going to step up and do, do something else to it. So let me back up and take a look at it. Um, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to show you one more trick though before we finish this up. I just dropped my charcoal so it's another successful episode of, of Rob's studio because I have dropped something. I'm going to take a script liner brush and I'm going to get some good moisture in it, some good paint thinner. I'm going to go back down here and get into my pure white with almost no orange in it at all. Get some good paint on the tip of it. And let's just say, let's take this one for instance, maybe some really strong white right in there. You wanna do that throughout the painting, maybe even pull some little, some little fellows out in here. That'll add a lot. Um, just kinda of keep, keep refining it. Um, I need a little bit stronger edge maybe right here, so I'm just going to kind of put that in. And overall, I actually don't see anywhere where I really need it that bad because I did a good, if you do a good job with the first brush, brush stroke of getting that, those top edges defined really well, then you're fine. So um, we're going to call this, um, this session complete. We've got to let this dry now uh, before we start on the landscape itself. Uh, next time we come back, uh, the next episode we'll be doing... Uh, probably the tree line, the grass, and we may even start on this tree. So we're gonna, this one's gonna start moving pretty quick, but this is what we're up to. We're painting a, painting a, a beautiful little local landscape here from uh, near my home in South Arkansas, but uh, I just want you guys to, to take note of, of this particular step and, and how you paint clouds onto a, a beautiful natural blue sky. These are, these are kind of the puffy type clouds, the good summery spring clouds that we all love so much. Um, that's going to do it. If you don't mind, please hit the big thumbs up button and please, please subscribe if you enjoyed this. That really helps us out to get, get subscriptions on this channel and it's free obviously. If you're on YouTube, you know that it's all free and I'm just glad to be able to share the, this, um, this wonderful art that I love so much. Uh, and, I, and I know most of you out there, if you're watching this, you enjoy it that much too. So just, just help us out and hit the subscribe button and even share this video with somebody. But thank you for, for watching here. It's for another episode of Rob's Studio. Keep painting and God bless.